This is part 3 of the walking code tutorial. In this video, I discuss how to navigate going down hills, stairs, and off of curbs with proper balance and minimal impact on the joints. If you haven't watched parts 1 and 2, go back and do that first, then come back and finish this video. And if you haven't clicked the like button, go ahead and do that now and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. In this portion of the video, we're going to discuss what we need to do with the body when we're going to go down hills or go down stairs. When we're doing any of those two actions, we need to move in a different way than when we're walking on flat ground. When we're walking on flat ground, as we discussed earlier, we had a change of weight and then we had a swing through portion of the step. Now you notice my center of gravity moves forward when I do that swing through. It's now not balanced over my left leg or my right leg. I'm in a really unstable position, which is why I'm wobbling a little bit. That's not a natural stopping position. After we take a normal step forward, we initiate another step forward, or we initiate a stopping position. It's not natural to stop in midair with my leg forward on the left and my leg behind on the right. So when I go downstairs, what I don't want to do is launch myself into the air and then have to come down with a crash. Whether I'm walking downstairs or whether I'm walking off of a curb or down a hill, I don't want my center of gravity to leave the step. I don't want my center of gravity to leave this balancing point, forcing me to have gravity send me crashing down the ground. I need to be able to create a balanced position before I do a controlled lowering of the body. So how do I do that? We talked early, earlier about changing weight, the first phase of a step. It ends naturally when my right toes are still on the ground, the tibia of my left foot or left leg is still perpendicular to the ground, and my weight is actually a little bit behind my foot. That's the end of the change of weight portion of the step. In order to step downhill or downstairs, now what I need to do is create a new position that is going to balance my weight over my left leg. That position is here. This is a stable, balanced position. So what's the difference between this and the swing through portion of a regular step? I'll show you right here. Instead of changing my hip action to my left leg, which is going to then travel my entire center of gravity forward, I'm going to continue lifting my right hip forward. But you notice, as long as I keep my torsional rotation on the left, my right leg does not actually swing forward as high up as I can lift my hip. It doesn't travel forward because I have my torsional rotation on the left side of the body. You can practice this action here. I'm reaching forward with my left arm. I'm lifting my left hip. Sorry, I'm lifting my right hip. And you can see where my leg naturally ends up going. It doesn't put me in a position to walk down a stair at this point because my leg is still behind my body, my foot is. After I change weight, what I'm going to do is continue to lift my right hip, but I'm also going to turn my right upper abdomen forward, and that is what is going to give the energy, the forward energy, to bring my right leg off the ground. This creates a new stable equilibrium position where I'm balanced on my left leg. Now, it's hard to see, but my right upper torso is turning counterclockwise and my left lower torso is turning counterclockwise. So they're both turning towards my left leg, allowing me to balance in a stable position. So I'm lifting my right hip and using torsion on the left and then I continue lifting the right hip 
but I turn my upper torso to the left leg, and now I've created a stable position. If I'm standing on a stair, I can shift my weight to my left leg, and then I turn the upper torso towards the left leg, and I've now created a stable position that I can use to take a step off in a controlled fashion. Or, I can create that same position, create this stable position here, and I can step down rather than forward as if I'm going down stairs. So when I go down a hill, I am actually going to move my center of gravity forward as I lower the bottom. I'm going to change my weight. This is the change of weight portion of the step. And then I create the new position balanced on my left leg by turning both the upper and lower torso towards the left leg as I'm flexing my right hip. I now travel downwards by extending my right hip, meaning reaching it down, and at the same time turning my upper torso forward on the left. That generates forward energy to allow me to lower in place. So if I'm walking down a hill, I can do that in succession, one step after another. Or if I'm stepping off a curb, that is what I would do. I would change weight. That puts me in this position here with my toes still on the ground. Then I would collect the right leg using torso action to shift the spine over the left leg into a balanced position. And then I would reach down with my right hip while turning forward on the left. Let's do that again. I change weight. I collect the right leg in a balanced position. And then I step down. That is the new position at the end of the swing through. And then I can start another normal step after that. So what's the difference between that and going downstairs? When I go downstairs, I use the same change of weight, the same collection to this new balancing position. And instead of keeping the torsional rotation of the body on the left side as I go down, I change the rotation to the right side. And that makes the body go straight down rather than forward. So what you can see here in slow motion is I change the weight with torsional rotation on the left. Then this part of the step is pretty invisible, but you have to practice this balancing position. I turn my upper torso to the left to release my right leg from the ground. And so now my right upper abdomen is turning this way. My left lower abdomen is turning to the left. What I'm going to do is extend my right hip and turn my belly button to the right. And that's going to cause me to drop and descend in a straight line rather than moving forward. At this point, this is a new equilibrium position where I'm extending my right hip, this knee is pushing downwards, my upper torso is turning counterclockwise, or if I'm reaching forward here with my right arm, my lower torso or my belly button is turning clockwise. That's the stable position at the end of a step. Well, it's not actually stable, this is not a natural position to stop. What I do in order to settle my weight on the step is I stop extending my right hip and I flex my left hip. That brings me down and settles my weight on the step. That's the change of weight. Now you'll notice if I lift my hip at this point, my leg still stays back. My foot does not swing forward because my right upper torso is turning forward. At this point, I need to regenerate that collection portion by turning my left upper torso forward, swinging my leg forward, and now I can take another step going down. Let's go 
back to the step. I change weight to the left foot using torsion on the left, flexion of the right hip. I collect the right leg, balancing on the left by using what I call important rotation, going counterclockwise with the upper torso and lower torso at the same time. That creates a stable balancing position. And then now I'm going to extend the right hip and turn my lower torso back and to the right in order to lower to the next step. It's actually the rotation of the pelvis and the lower abdomen going backwards that causes my body to descend straight instead of turning forwards. If I were to turn my pelvis to the left, it would swing my leg forward. I don't want to go forward when I'm going downstairs. I want it to go down. And so my belly button is turning backwards. My upper torso and thus my arm swing is going forwards as I take the step. Then I lift my left hip to create my new equilibrium position. I change my upper torso to create a new balanced position on my right leg, and then I step down. Again. Let's do this slower. Change of weight. Collection. Swing through. Change of weight, collection, and if I was on another step, I would just do another swing through. That's going downstairs, going downhill, or off of a curb, change of weight, collection, swing through. You notice at the end of the swing through, I'm not in a stable position, I have to immediately transition to the next change of weight. And that is how we move down stairs or we move downhill in an effective fashion without putting ourselves at risk of falling. If I take a normal step by changing weight and then using my left hip to swing through, I send myself off into no man's land and I have to crash down using gravity. Obviously not a good thing. That's why Stairs are such a dangerous thing, particularly for people as they get older because they don't understand how to use the core properly and the reflexes are not as attuned as when you're younger. And so it's very difficult to compensate. If you learn how to use the core when you're younger, then as you get older, you will be able to use it naturally without thinking about it. You can go up and down stairs with good balance and you won't be at high, as high a risk of falling as if you grow older with unconscious movement, which is what most of us have, and then it's very hard to compensate if you're moving unconsciously. So what I'm trying to do with the walking code is help people develop more conscious movement so they can move more fluidly, uh, move more effectively, and ultimately move without pain and without the danger of falling. Thanks for watching the full walking code tutorial. Please leave a comment and let me know how you liked the video and let me know if there's any other topics that you would like to see in the future.